I'll make this quick. If you're going to go to Amazon.com, go to jmore.com, click the Amazon link. That's how you support the podcast. Buy whatever you want. Go to jmore.com, click the Amazon link. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, you got a bad look man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. More stories. It's a twofer. Welcome to Fake Mustache Studios. Laird Hamilton, Gabby Reese. Or is it Gabby Hamilton and Laird, Laird Reese? You are Laird Reese. Absolutely. We know who wears the pants in this family. <laughs> a mother of three, three and a half, four. Well, I'm is that not dogs his, and I'm not husbands his included? He yeah. told, I told you the line he told me we were married a few years and he said, you know, I had a mother and she died. So, you know, I'm not his mommy. Three girls. Well, you have one mother. Yeah. That's a pretty creepy thing to say to your Well, you know, no, but you maybe know, a woman you're going to marry. Almost 17 years later and I've I've been uh, you know, I've well, learned you that want to lesson. set the precedent early. Yeah. You don't want your wife turning <laughs> into your mom. Now, I, now talk about creepy. Doesn't well, mean he doesn't sure. want me to make his dinner or do his laundry, but don't tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> right. But and my then I thought after. When my uh when my wife when I first brought her back to Jersey to meet my folks, like every it just Basically, I hooked up with somebody that made the trains run on time. Like, she, everything was, like, I now know that the shoes go in the closet under the stairs. There shouldn't be dishes in the sink, like, stuff. Or I'm like, put the dishes in the sink. No, the dishwasher's right next to the sink. Like, just easy, stupid yeah. stuff that guys don't think of on their own. And my father looked at Nick and said, he always needed to be managed and mothered. And I was like, oh, my God, he nailed it. So no matter what you say, Laird, I know Gabby is a, a mother, big mother, fi- a mother figure in well your life. Yeah. So because there's two of you, and by the way, I'm going to tell the listeners, you guys are two of the coolest people. You know what? I don't have to tell the listeners because you're a seven-time gold medal winner. Oh, sure. Right? I didn't get no, that wrong, did I? No, you're wrong. You're wrong. I am wrong? Yeah. But I'm that doesn't, and winning or losing doesn't make you cool, does it? No. Yeah, no. It what are you kidding me? It actually it, usually gets in the way. It does, right? Well, yeah. I just want to, how many gold medals did you win? I went straight to, from college to the pros. And when I was playing, we weren't in the Olympics and I played. I you played in Sydney. I played in four and four. So that discipline wasn't in the Olympics. And then I switched to two on two, but by then I was done playing. On the Wikipedia page, it says you won seven gold medals Does it? in the Sydney Olympics. Well, and it's all good. Go. Well, Laird. So there you go. You but seven. not believe everything you I'd have on to, Wikipedia. I'd have to be playing volleyball for t- like 20, you know, six, five Olympic 25 years of Olympics. Yeah, that was right? like my next four minutes of questions. Was like, how did you grind <laughs> out so and many? You're only 42. I mean, <laughs> so you went right from where'd you go to college? Florida State. FSU. That's right. Yeah. Chris I'm, Wanky, Charlie Ward, Gabby Reese, Deion Sanders. I was there when Deion was there. We were. That, you guys it, ever hook up? Did you guys ever hook up? No, but we're, we were great friends. Ever, Gabby, did we you guys were great friends. No. Did you guys ever hook up? No. He, I, he, like I don't fool around with corners. <laughs> He did, he, well, I won't get into it, but actually, you know, I met him when I was 17 and he's still actually a friend of mine and he's looked out for me a little bit over the years. They never hooked up. That's how you know that they never hooked up. <laughs> friends. You stay friends. All that time. <laughs> this, I read this one place. I, forget, I think it was like in GQ and like their weird quizzes that oh, they do. I can't, wait to, his, like, I can't wait to hear his content. The he's stuff got that he going. pulls out. Oh, for yeah, sure. Here we go. Take a it was like, no, it was a line from an old movie. And when the guy figured out or the wife figured out the guy was having an affair, and he's like, how did you know? She said, never shake hands with somebody you're having an affair with. So, like, anytime somebody comes over Ooh. and they kiss your wife, just <laughs> completely regular, yeah. that's completely... When they shake hands, it's... Like, if yeah, Dion I gotcha. came to your house and you guys just kissed, yeah. you would you would be like, be like no well, deal. they went to college. But if, like, if Dion came over and all of a sudden you guys shook hands, Larry would be like, what? <laughs> you better get back now there and I kiss... Know. You better get back there and kiss my wife. <laughs> Laird would suss that out right away. invite some guys back over and I'll take a uh, hop to where's, nice. Where's Antonio Cromartie? He can, he can get anybody. <laughs> Laird would suss it all out, though. Uh, so, no, you were never in the Olympics because it wasn't a sport. It yeah. wasn't. It was later, and, and I was playing one discipline on the beach and then another. And so one I... Discipline meaning like two-man, four-man? Yes, I was playing four-man first, primarily when I first turned professional. I was drafted. 
Because it happened at the same time. All right, let's go. Because there's two of you, I want to go in order and jump back and forth because okay. I like the confluence of events that put you guys together. Two oh. people that are actually the greatest at what they do and did, and then now making beautiful families together and part of the Malibu mob. And you know, for the listeners, to commute from Kauai <laughs> to Malibu, you guys really, you guys can kiss our ass. <laughs> it's a long way to go. People say, "Oh, do you guys go on vacation?" I go, "From what?" Like we listen, we Detroit. know it. We know it. I always say that too. I could have married somebody from from Detroit, and I would have been commuting from California to Detroit. But I lucked out. I got somebody from Hawaii. But I forced you to come stay with me in Hawaii yeah. for half. Laird kept me around too many people. It's not good for him. Oh, so Laird, means. when you were on, you actually were on Gary and married the two of you. And yeah. That's where we met. And yes. Laird, I was asking you about UFC and boxing and stuff, mm-hmm. and you were really adamant. Like I don't like violence. I don't like people getting hit. I don't like to watch fights. And you sort of intimated to me at the time that growing up, I got the impression that growing up white in Hawaii was very violent every day. Yes. Really? Yeah. Like people just beat you up because you were white. Absolutely. When did well, that, they try to. I was going to say, when did it turn from getting beat up to turning the corner of like, nah, I don't think so. Box got a style. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I mean, I think I, I, that's where I used a lot of what I did uh, to separate me from other people. I would just usually do radical things to kind of draw the attention away, either be daredevil or be a troublemaker in the class or something like that. And, and, uh, and, and I think I got a reputation that I was willing to do anything. And that kind of has a tendency to chase people away. You know, dogs like to chase people that run. So yeah. I was, I, when the, when you don't run and you, and you, and they and, and then they don't know what you're going to do and what you're capable of doing. I think that kind of, you know, that kind of gives people a little yeah, bit that of that crazy, thing. bro. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. We were sitting around because playing talk story, anything. bro. He pulled down his pants. He dropped a deuce on the campfire. Yeah. I don't know why oh, wait, is my that Hawaiian not Adam is Mexican. Sandler, uh, what, what movie was that? I don't know. No, it's like, it sounds like a mix of, of uh, what's... Yeah, I don't have you, a big you know, Adam Sandler you know catalog No, but you know who, who did his pigeon like that was from that first 50 days? Oh, Rob remember? Schneider? His pigeon very was funny. very much like your Mexican <laughs> kind of... I just did know. a Hawaiian. I turned him into like a Mexican guy from the Inland Empire. Yeah. Yeah, Laird, you guys should get like a summer home in like Newark, New Jersey. I know. Sure. Just go back Next and forth. Next to a freeway, maybe a train station. Just go to Manhattan, right down downtown. Basically, you I've... lived your life in a way where you really never have to wear shoes, except to get on the plane to go to your other home where you don't have to wear shoes. Well, or do That's sports. True. You know, you got to wear sh- motocross boots to do motocross. You got to wear snowboard boots to snowboard. You got to do you motocross you know, so, too. Well, and you wear so snowboard whatever, boots just... to foil. Yeah, well, but I'm just saying, usually any kind of foot apparel is related to some sort of activity. You live your whole life without shoes on. You get to the airport, you've got to put shoes on to go to the airport. Then no, you get to slippers, security, just slippers. they make you take your shoes take off. Your That's shoes why off. you're slippers like, bro, off. this is how I showed up. <laughs> yeah. How about you just let me roll through the airport barefoot like a Hare anyway. Krishna? But is it illegal to be without your shoes on in the airport? I don't know. What is this? Con- con- All right, Russia? sorry. No. What is this, Bulgaria? They probably try to make you wear shoes. Huh? No shirt, no shoes, no, no dice. <laughs> Even my kids no know service. that. My four-year-old knows that one. Brody always says that. She's like, do I need my shirt and my shoes for service? I go, yeah, get it on. But it's, slippers are easy to take off at the airport. So you, That's how, how we were raised in slippers. You were, But were you born in Hawaii or did you move there as a No, I, my mom moved to Hawaii when I was about three months old. From baby. where? San Francisco. A lot of memories from San Francisco? Tons of them. Two-month-old memories? Wait, tell, tell him your biological dad's last name and your mom's last name, and he can figure out how they met. Okay, well, my, my biological father's last name was Zerfas. That's Z-E-R-F-A-S. And then my, my mom's uh, maiden name was Zyrick. Where do you think they met? Hey, Ashbury. No, come on. Zerfas and Zyrick? At roll call. Hello, home room. Classroom, home room. You're sitting right next oh. to each other. Come on, Jay. Well, I don't know. I was thinking of, I was going bigger. No, she was like 19, 20 when she had Laird. She was yeah. a puppy. Zerfas and Zurich? Zyrick. 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 And Zerfas. <laughs> Yeah, it was sweet until Larry came Greek out. Greek and a German. And then the dad was like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Did your dad try to get back in touch with you when you got famous? Uh, it seems to be how the story I found out. him, actually. Yeah. I really? tracked him down, yeah. And where is he? Detroit. He's dead now. He died. But but I tracked but him, but I tracked him and had a, yeah, and then I had a, I had a breakfast with him. And, uh, we were 18, right? Or yeah. 16? 18, 19, something and like that. And then he had 20. one phone call, like, remember, like, maybe 10 years ago? Yeah. And I was all like... Well, what did he say? Did he say he was sorry? Did he explain himself? And Larry was like, no. <laughs> they just had this, this, yeah. I don't know. It was just an awkward, stilted meeting. Of no, but what? you just, I think you just realize at that point that, that unless you have memories to share, 
that really that genetics and then you're that you're related to them genetically really is just that's just one in. that's just one piece. But you're you meeting a stranger. You got to put the a time stranger. in. And at the end of the day, and you have some certain genetic traits. You know, you're you're having you have genetic traits that you're similar to, but really you don't have anything. You don't you don't go. Oh, remember that time at the baseball or the football or surfing or remember that time those mokes were chasing us and we had to you know run down that thing or you know you don't have any of these experiences that really that that's all you have at the end when you look back at your life to share with people your friends your wife your parents it's all about those experiences and when you don't have any experience with somebody there's nothing to talk about you get through the lunch and you're like okay your eyes are not my eyes look similar have a nice day i'll see you later (laughs) has that made you a better father absolutely you think had your parents stayed together you'd be uh, it probably made you exponentially a better father. Well, it, it, you know, I don't know if it's made me a better father, but it's definitely made me more conscious of being a father and then wanting to maybe be different than what my dad was. I mean, and I think the, the not only did it, it's like I'm not going to begin to understand why two people can't be together in a relationship because that's a lot of work. I go, if, if mom and dad can't be together, that's, but it's more about his support of the family, like him helping my mom pay bills to help me. And I go, for me, I go, that's, you know, for me, if you're not going to be there, at least, you know, send some money. So, so if Laird <laughs> can't, if, help my if, mom feed if me. If Laird can't stand me anymore, I know at least he'll be sending money. <laughs> so we got it on record on no, more stories. You heard that? You heard that, everyone? It's been recorded. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gabby, you things. went to FSU. You played volleyball at FSU. Yeah, I was a late bloomer. I started. I grew up in the Virgin Islands until my junior year of high school. So you guys, whole your whole life, Listen, you were barefoot. It, we can't. No, it's, I mean, I had to wear shoes to school. I had a uniform. It wasn't like. But she was discriminated against like I was. And like I was discriminated because I was a white guy. And and she was discriminated because she was a white guy. Giant. Giant. White woman, but giant. Giant. So in a way, still the same and on an island. So there's a harshness that her and I have that, that's probably where we have this. You were always super tall? Yeah, I was. I know, right. I just scraped the bottom of the barrel of bullshit questions that I've ever been. I was six feet tall. Have you always been tall? Next, I'll ask you how the weather is up there. Six feet at t- six feet at twelve. At twelve, six, really? I was done at fifteen. I was this tall, six three already. And it was a super awkward time, or were you oh, like supermodel? Honey, good- still, it's still awkward. <laughs> well, no, I mean you're. I mean no, you I'm like kidding. model good looks, and you you know you yeah. make a living yeah. because you have a you can talk and walk, and yes. you're, you're a very good I, analyst. Uh, I I think it was all really good. Um, I think when it's too easy when you're young, sometimes it's a disservice to you. I think when you get a bit of a rub, it helps in your you know, developing you a little bit. And so I, uh, you know, I always appreciate that. You know, we have this conversation about our kids because things are pretty good for them. And so you sort of wonder what's their rub going to be in life that helps them get an edge. That's you to create one. Like, well, we well, try. Burn their face. We're mean. Make them walk around with burns <laughs> in their face. Well, they did that already. And that was, there's a movie about it. But that's Abuse them. No. I was discriminated against primarily because I was an asshole. <laughs> that could never. Did that stop for you? It has actually. When I became mothered and managed. Oh really? Oh yeah. She buffer. She's the buffer between you and the My rest of the Bert world. My friend Bert Kreischer said once on this podcast. He said, "I don't think people realize the Tupac that used to live within you." <laughs> and my wife. My wife gunned him down in Las Vegas. How did she? Uh, how do? How do you think she? She managed you. Why do you think you allowed her to mother and manage you? Because she was everything at first sight. And I explained it. I think it might have been even the last podcast, so forgive me for repeating myself. But it's, yeah, I was with Kelly Carlin. We talked about this. It was like when you see a deer in the woods and you start walking differently and you become super aware of how special it is and how delicate and incredible a creature you're looking at. And you get really still and quiet. And you're suddenly conscious of even how loud your breathing is and what's under your feet and the earth and the temperature. And when you want someone else to look at it, you're super light. You don't go, hey, look at that deer over there. It's like, your friend's like, or what? And you're like, so with me, it was like that, like seeing a deer in the woods and behaving in a way that I didn't want that deer to ever turn and run away. But then I learned after behaving that way over an extended period of time that that was the true self. That was the me that always overcompensated and needed attention that was the the wall I put up of like the that 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 showtime all the time was to protect that protect guy yeah. inside like and Kelly Carlin, George Carlin's daughter, really she's like a therapist and like a super oh, how about transcendental that? meditation Buddhist and she goes so that's you discovered the actual self and I was like yeah far out 
How about being George Carlin's daughter? We talked a lot about that it. You're, you're the podcast right after that. So you got big shoes to fill. That'd be heavy. But you guys are, so you were drafted in what? So a prof- I, I didn't know there was professional volleyball well, leagues. I know. It's, I know. Well, they're barely, but, um, so I got moved to Florida my junior year of high school, went to, from the Virgin Islands, from the Caribbean, because I was kind of going nowhere. And my mom thought that was a, probably a good idea to get Smoking out of there. Smoking a lot of dope? Not so much dope. I was more of a rebellious, and rum is sort of like cheaper than soap. Hamilton. And Laird, Laird Reese. I'm you are Laird Reese. Reese. You know who wears the pants in his family. <laughs> a mother of three? Three and a half? Four? Well, I'm is that not dogs his, and I'm not husbands his included? He yeah. told, I told you the line. He told me we were married a few years, and he said, you know, I had a mother, and she died. So, you know, I'm not his mommy. Three girls. Well, you have one mother. Yeah. That's a pretty creepy thing to say to your... Well, you know, no, but... Maybe you know, a woman you're going to marry. Almost 17 years later, and I've I've been... Uh, you know, I've well, learned you that want to lesson. set the precedent early. Yeah. You don't want your wife turning into your mom. <laughs> I, now, talk about creepy. It doesn't well, mean he doesn't sure. want me to make his dinner or do his laundry, but don't tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> right. But and then my, I caught after. When my, uh, when my wife, when I first brought her back to Jersey to meet my folks, like every, it just, basically I hooked up with somebody that made the trains run on time. Like she, everything was, like I now know that the shoes go in the closet under the stairs. <laughs> There shouldn't be dishes in the sink, like stuff. Or I'm like, put the dishes in the sink. No, the dishwasher's right next to the sink. Like just easy, stupid yeah. stuff that guys don't think of on their own. And my father looked at Nick and said, I'll make this quick. If you're going to go to Amazon.com, go to jmore.com, click the Amazon link. That's how you support the podcast. Buy whatever you want. Go to jmore.com, click the Amazon link. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. More stories. It's a twofer. Welcome to Fake Mustache Studios. Laird Hamilton, Gabby Reese. Or is it Gabby? He always needed to be managed and mothered. And I was like, oh my God, he nailed it. So no matter what you say, Laird. I know. Gabby is a, a, mother, fi- a mother figure in well your life. So because there's two of you, and by the way, I'm going to tell the listeners, you guys are two of the coolest people. You know what? I don't have to tell the listeners because you're a seven-time gold medal winner. Oh, sure. Right? I didn't get no, that wrong, did I? No, you're wrong. You're wrong. I am wrong? Yeah. But that doesn't, and winning or losing doesn't make you cool, does it? No. Yeah, no. It what are you kidding me? That actually think, usually gets in the way. It does, right? 